Welcome back to another video. So I received a lot of great questions from a lot of mechanical engineering students asking what courses to take to best prepare for one's professional career after graduation. If you're currently a senior in high school thinking about pursuing mechanical engineering, or you're a student in university with the standard ME curriculum, this video is for you. Many times a university will give you the option to choose from over hundreds of courses and it can be really overwhelming to figure out what exactly to focus on. Well, today we will walk through the top 10 set of courses or broad topics that every mechanical engineer should take and be familiar with. You can basically think of this as a high level outline to reference whenever you're enrolling in fall or spring semester courses. If you can comfortably speak to all of the topics covered in these courses that we're about to go over in this video, you're gonna be in a perfect spot after graduation. If that sounds good to you, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel. Your support really goes a long way and helps the performance of this video. With that taken care of, let's get started. Number one is basic math. This includes calculus one, two, and three differential equations, statistics, and or linear algebra. These courses are essential and will really separate a mediocre engineer from a good engineer. Many times as an engineer, you will be faced with complex real world problems that require you to model the behavior of a phenomena with respect to time, analyze data, make design calculations, or control a stochastic process such as a manufacturing line. All of these things require a solid understanding of math. Additionally, virtually all engineering courses will require some level of math to solve problems. So definitely take math first if you want to do well in your other courses. If you are in high school, I would recommend taking AP Calculus and Statistics if they are available. Number two is Physics, which is generally split into two courses, Mechanics and Electricity and Magnetism. Although this is a no-brainer, I see a lot of students downplaying the importance of physics. Everything that engineers see and do is essentially physics. We simply leverage the fundamental physical laws of the universe to solve real-world problems and improve society. At least we try to improve mankind, but sometimes we fail. Huh? Anyway, we must thank people like Newton, Maxwell, and Einstein for giving us the necessary tools to do our job. If you are in high school, I would also recommend taking AP Physics to get a head start. Number three is Mechanics. Now this is really important stuff and it's generally split into two courses, Statics and Dynamics. Statics, as the name implies, will teach you fundamentals of statics of particles, rigid bodies, trusses, frames, and virtual work, as well as distributive forces, unit axial stress and strain, and shear and bending moment diagrams. Everything you analyze will be in equilibrium. Dynamics, on the other hand, will teach you linear and angular momentum, kinematics and kinetics of rigid bodies in two dimensions, energy methods, and perhaps mechanical vibrations. Everything you analyze will be accelerating. Number four is mechanics of materials and material science. Now some schools will separate these into two separate courses and others will consolidate them into a single course. As long as you learn all of the topics, you'll be in a great spot. Mechanics of materials introduces stress and strain relationships, axial and shear loading, torsion of shafts and thin wall tubes, stress within and deflection of bending beams, combined loadings, stress and strain transformations, the generalized Hooke's law, material failure theories, and column buckling. Material science is more chemistry based and will seek to explain things at the microscopic level. Concepts will include structure and properties of solids, crystalline structure, defect structures, atom movement and diffusion, nucleation and growth, deformation, phase diagrams, strengthening mechanisms, heat treatment, ferrous and non-ferrous alloys, ceramic, polymers, and composites. As an engineer, you can't just get away with knowing about solids. You have to show fluids the same amount of love. Number five, as you probably can guess, is fluid mechanics. Now, fluid mechanics is essential for every engineer and it's usually divided 
into incompressible and compressible flow, as well as steady and unsteady state flow. Most undergrad courses will only cover incompressible flow, but if you're thinking about concentrating in aerospace or designing things like amphibious vehicles, definitely take a course covering compressible flow. Topics that you will need to know include properties of fluids, fluid statics, dimensional analysis, control volume approach to conservation of mass, momentum, and energy, leading to the Bernoulli equation, differential analysis approach, Approach to conservation of mass and momentum, leading to potential flow in the Navier-Stokes equations. You'll also learn applications to pipe flow, boundary layers analysis, and methods for estimating drag and lift forces. You should also know what Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids are. Number six is thermodynamics and heat transfer. Now this will be typically covered in two separate courses as these are really broad branches of physics. In this course, you will gain an understanding of macroscopic treatment of the fundamental concepts of thermodynamic systems, such as the zero, first, and second laws, properties of simple compressible substances, entropy, energy availability, ideal gas mixtures and psychometrics, and thermodynamic cycles. You will also learn about applications to engines, refrigeration systems, as well as energy conversion. Heat transfer will cover fundamentals of heat exchange processes and applications to heat exchanger design, principles of steady and unsteady conduction, introduction to numerical analysis with software like COMSOL, natural and forced convection heat transfer and internal and external flows, radiant heat exchange, and introduction to boiling and condensation heat transfer. Number seven is design and manufacturing. Now this is also a really broad topic and schools will typically teach these in two to three courses. The courses will typically be titled Intro to CAD, Product Design, or Manufacturing Processes. These courses are awesome and they'll give you a first taste of what it's like to work as a mechanical engineer in industry. You learn how to create technical drawings in two and three dimensions in detail using advanced computer-aided design tools. Geometrical dimensioning and tolerance methods and specifications will be taught and applied to a variety of tasks and projects. Topics will include initial aspects of machine components and design, computer numerical control, computer-aided manufacturing, and relation to machining and various manufacturing processes. You'll probably be assigned projects where you work with a team to propose solutions to practical problems and to develop their ideas through the construction and testing of physical prototypes. Potential topics that you might learn include Arduino sensing and control, mechanical metrology, principles of efficient mechanical design, manufacturing techniques, as well as CAE tutorials for product simulation and prototype testing. Number eight is electric circuits. Now this topic is just as important to mechanical engineers as it is to electrical engineers because nothing in our modern age is purely mechanical and most of the systems you work on will typically involve sensors, motors, and power supplies that are all controlled by circuits. Topics that you will learn will include introduction to electric circuit analysis and design, voltage, current, and power, circuit laws and theorems, element IV curves, operational amplifier circuits, transient response of capacitor and inductor circuits, sinusoidal steady state response, frequency response, and transfer functions. Okay, so these eight overarching topics that we just covered are things that every mechanical engineer should feel comfortable speaking to whether it's during a job interview or on the job. Now we will cover two courses that I don't think are must-haves for maybe getting a job or becoming an effective engineer, but are nice to have during your tool set if you want to be the very best like no one ever was. So the number nine course is Computational Engineering or Programming 101. Most schools will offer one of these courses, so I recommend learning a powerful language with simple syntax such as MATLAB or Python as a starting point. We live in a digital age and everything we do is on the computer. As an engineer, you will need to crunch numbers to analyze huge data sets, write programs to perform specific tasks, design control systems, and write machine learning algorithms if you're into that kind of stuff. Knowing how to program is going to help you in all aspects as an engineer. Last but not least is number 10, engineering economy. 
This course will help you become better with all aspects of money, not only in your personal life, but also at work. Important key concepts you will learn include analysis of engineering alternatives for replacement, present worth analysis, cost control, budgeting, and indirect costs and their allocation. You will also gain an understanding of company startups, stock ownership, and financial annual reports. Other potential topics that will be covered include cost optimization, economic life, taxes, inflation, inventories, depreciation, accounting, contract negotiations, professional ethics, and cost proposal preparation. All right guys, so those are my top 10 recommended courses. Eight fundamental courses or topics that all mechanical engineers should understand and two bonus courses for those who want to become the very best. One thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is that you don't have to be an expert at all of these topics. You just have to have a high level understanding of these things by the time you graduate. As you develop throughout your career, you'll naturally lean towards certain areas based on your job requirements and personal interests. But I think we should always aim to become more well-rounded engineers by brushing up on fundamental topics from time to time and constantly learning new things. All right, I really hope that this course summary or outline can serve as a handy reference in your personal studies. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.